everyone enjoying your weekend. I just wanted to come on here today and do a quick video concerning what I, what I consider to be a very important topic. Wow, you hear that thunder? Oh my goodness. Wow, the Lord is speaking. Anyway, I, I just wanted to come on, like I said, and talk about spiritual warfare. Because in my experience, I find that we as Christians sometimes do not know anything about spiritual warfare. And speaking for myself, I know that in my early Christian days, I knew nothing. I was absolutely naive concerning spiritual warfare. And I really did not believe that spiritual warfare was real. But I have come to realize that spiritual warfare is very, very real. And once you're a Christian, and once you call upon the name of Jesus Christ, you are going to come under spiritual warfare. And it is something that all Christians should know how to how to how to to conduct warfare, how to conduct yourself, how to go about it, because it is something that is very essential. And especially in these last days, we see the enemy waging war all across the world. And we need to know how to fight. Now, I know for most persons, well, I shouldn't say most, for some persons, when you think about spiritual warfare, you think about fighting demons and rebuking them and, and you know, getting them to leave and so on. And that is a part of spiritual warfare. But spiritual warfare is much more than fighting demons. It also includes, remember that the devil comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. And he comes at our minds. And he plants deception, and he plants doubt, and he he plants lies, and all of these things we have to battle. And so, we all need to know how to fight. We need to know how to fight. So today I just wanted to, to share with you some insight that I've gotten from reading Ephesians 6, which is that famous um, passage about spiritual warfare and putting on the full armor of God. Now, I'm reading from Ephesians 6, verse 11, and it says, Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. No, let me start at verse 10. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, I want to make the first point. It says here that we are to be strong in the Lord and to put and to be strong in the power of his might. Now, spiritual warfare, it has nothing to do with our might. So remember that once you are engaged in spiritual warfare, it is not your might, it is not my might. We are only going to be able to stand in the power of the might of the Lord. If we try to do it in our own might, in our own power, we will be defeated by the enemy. So let's just get that foundation. Let's lay that foundation. Once you are undergoing spiritual warfare, it has to be in his might, not our might. And then let's go down to verse 14. It says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. Now, one thing, something stands out here for me. It says we are to have our loins girt about with truth and we are to have on the breastplate of righteousness and our feet must be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now these three pieces of the armor, the first piece of the armor that is mentioned is the belt of truth. Now if you are going to, to fight spiritual warfare, if you are going to engage in spiritual warfare, you must know the truth. Because 
Remember the Bible says, we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. This is what we are fighting against. We are fighting against the enemy's lies. And we must have the breastplate, sorry, the belt of truth in place. Now, what is the truth? The truth is that Jesus Christ came and died, shed his blood for our sins, and he was resurrected from the dead. And because he was resurrected from the dead, and because he died for our sins, we now have access into heaven. We now have access into the promises, the full promises of God. It means that we have been saved and we have that promise of eternal salvation. That is what the truth is. Now, the enemy does not want us to know the truth. He wants us to believe that there is no such thing as salvation. He wants us to believe that if you keep on sinning, you are not saved. Now, let me just clarify something here. We are saved by faith. It is not of works, lest any man should boast. So that faith that we have, that belief that we have in Jesus Christ, that is what saves us. But it doesn't stop there. We must believe in Jesus Christ. And when we believe, and this belief must be strong. It must be a, 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 a belief that is true. Once we believe in Jesus Christ, he comes and he baptizes us with his Holy Spirit, deposits his Holy Spirit inside of us, and after that, we are saved. It says nothing about keeping the law. Nothing about keeping the law. However, once we have the Holy Spirit inside us, once the Holy Spirit dwells in us, we will fulfill the requirements of the law. And it's not something that we have to try to do. It is the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit will bear in us. And let me tell you something about fruit. I have never seen an apple tree or a mango tree or an orange tree or any type of fruit tree, for that matter, trying to bear fruit. I have never seen it happen and I don't think I will ever see it happen. So... Once you have the Spirit inside you, the fruit, the natural fruit of the Spirit, it's not something that you have to try to do. It's not something that you have to try to do. Naturally, fruit will come forth. An orange tree is going to bear oranges. A mango tree is going to bear mangoes. And it is something that is going to be natural. You don't have to be told to bear fruit. You don't have to be told what to do, what not to do to bear fruit. You will bear fruit fruit naturally and so this is why remember the bible says that jesus fulfilled the law so because jesus fulfilled the law there is no longer any reason for us to focus on fulfilling the law we just have to focus on jesus christ and what he did for us we have to ensure that we stay in belief we continue to believe that he died and he rose and because of that our sins can be forgiven our sins have been forgiven and the devil wants us to doubt that he wants us to think that that is a lie and it can't be that simple you can't just believe he wants you to believe that oh you can't just believe in jesus christ and that alone along with the baptism of the holy spirit he wants us to believe that that cannot save you. He wants us to believe that you must fulfill the requirements of the law to be saved. And that is not true. It is not true. The law has been fulfilled already by Jesus Christ. So when someone sins, when someone sins, when you and I sin, That is not going to mean that we have lost our salvation. It does not mean that we have lost our salvation because that is not the way we gain our salvation in the first place. In the first place, 
we are going to sin because there is we have a fleshly nature we are flesh and blood and flesh and blood is going to sin but we know that once we confess our sins he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness so we must know the truth let me hurry on here we must know the truth and then we must have on the blessed breastplate of righteousness now remember the righteousness is not our self-righteousness it is not us following the ten commandments it is not us being good to one another the breastplate of righteousness is something that is given to us once we believe on Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection. He gives us his righteousness. Our righteousness is as filthy rags, and he gives us his righteousness. And then it talks about our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. What is this gospel of peace? The gospel of peace is the gospel that says, Jews and Gentiles alike are now, we are now alike. We now have the same, the very same requirements for entering into heaven. We now have the same requirements for salvation. Now, remember the Jews were given the Ten Commandments. And that was how initially they would have obtained their salvation by observing the Ten Commandments. And if they missed one they were in danger of losing their salvation and remember the priest would have to go continually to make sacrifices for the sins of the people and the gentiles we there was no salvation for us however in jesus christ when jesus christ came and died on the cross he died for every person every creature jews and gentiles alike and so there is no peace there's no dividing wall between Jews and Gentiles anymore. And the Jews are not bound by the law anymore. That is not where their salvation comes from. It does not come from fulfilling the law. It comes from believing in the Messiah, in Jesus Christ. Similarly, it is the same thing for us, the Gentiles. So that is the gospel of peace. Now, those three parts of the armor are what we would call um, defensive weapons, defensive parts of the armor. They must be in place. They must be there. They must, they are, they are, they are armor, pieces of armor that are there to protect us. You must know the truth. You must have the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And you must, you must be ready to share the gospel of peace. And then the other weapons, it talks about the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, and praying in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. Now, if, if you look at these other parts of the armor, you will find that these now are offensive weapons. These are off offensive weapons, meaning... These are things that you're going to have to be active now in using. You, it says, take up the shield of faith. Take it. Grab the shield of faith. And you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. It says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. And pray always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit. Now, let me just point out one thing here. If you look at it carefully, you realize that none of these things we can do in and of ourselves. The shield of faith, our faith, comes from reading the word. The word says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it is the word of God. It is hearing the word of God that gives us faith, that builds our faith, that creates our faith. And the helmet of salvation, salvation comes from Jesus Christ. We cannot save ourselves, it is of Jesus Christ. The sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, it is not our word, it is not our sayings, it is the word of God. And then finally, praying, it says, in the Spirit. 
praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Now, persons look at this and they forget or they don't realize that it says in the spirit. Now, when we pray in the spirit, remember, it is not us praying. It is not me praying. It is not you praying. It is Jesus Christ himself. It is the Holy Spirit himself making intercession for us, making intercession with God for us. So you need to realize that in all of this, in all of the spiritual warfare, there is nothing that we can do in and of ourselves. It is all of the Holy Spirit. It is all of Jesus. It is all of God. When we take up the shield of faith, we are using the word of God. We, the faith is built by the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit. When we pray in the spirit, we are praying the perfect will of God. And as a matter of fact, it is him praying through us. It is not us doing the praying. So spiritual warfare has a lot to do with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. It does not depend on us fighting the enemy, kicking the enemy down, rebuking the enemy. That is not going to be effective. We must depend on the Holy Spirit. We must rest in the Holy Spirit and let him do the work. It is his work, not ours. So I just wanted to point that out. And sometimes you get tired, you know, you hear people saying, oh my, you know, they're fighting demons and they're fighting demons and, you know, putting a lot of work and effort into it. But really, we need to rest. We need to rest. The verse says, stand therefore. Stand therefore. And be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He is the one who will fight the battle. The battle is not ours. It is the Lord's. And that is what I wanted to share today. And to encourage us that we all as Christians can overcome in spiritual warfare. We just need to rest in the finished work of Jesus Christ. We need to hold on to the truth. Because without the truth, without righteousness, which is not our righteousness, but Christ's righteousness, and without the gospel of peace, those three first parts of the armor, without those, it makes no sense. We take up the shield of faith because there will be no faith. Faith in what? You can't have faith in, you can have faith in a lie. You can, but that is not going to be effective. The truth, you must have faith and believe the truth. Similarly, it makes no sense reading the Bible if you don't believe, if you don't have that truth that belt of truth and you won't be able to pray in the spirit if you don't believe so the point is it is all about jesus it is all about the holy spirit it is all about god spiritual warfare is all about god it's all about the holy spirit what we need to do now is to make use of the weapons make you build up our faith by reading the word of god Use the, the tongues that he has given us to pray in the spirit, to pray the perfect will of God. And this is how we will overcome. Ensuring that we are properly dressed, properly armored in the full armor of God. Now, this video is getting pretty long, so I'm just going to cut it there for today. But I want you to remember this. Remember it. And and let us fight, let us fight with wisdom. Let us fight using the weapons that we have been given and let us use them effectively. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters, until we speak again.